Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the linear algebra part 2. We will discuss about the basis and dimensions of the vector space. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute. So, the last lecture was the discuss on the type 1 where you have to find the basis and dimension of the problem where some condition is imposed on the vector R. You can see all these problems where some condition is imposed or related to the vectors are there. Now we will discuss about the type 2 in this today's lecture where there is no condition imposed on the vector. How you can find the basis and the dimensions of the vectors. A, ba a basis any of the subset S, this is a subset of the vector space V over the field F is called as the basis. If this vector S is my ally and this is a span. What is the meaning of the span is if you consider any of the elements in the V then it can be written as the elements of the S. Every element of the V can be written as the elements of the S. We already discussed that how you can solve these two topics uh, with the help of the various example you can see that linear span and the linear independent with the four different method with the shortcut tricks are there. You must follow these two lectures firstly before watching this one as here. What is the rule for finding the basis and dimension? We can summarize them. But I will tell you the three step rule are there. The first step is we can write a matrix M, a matrix A whose rows are nothing but the given vector elements. Then our target is to convert them into the row actual form and you have to count the number of the non-zero steps. How you can compute this row actual form? You can simply watch this previous lecture with the shortcut tricks so that you can complete the table within a one minutes. Uh, to the row reduce echelon form. Now for example here, so there are the two methods of finding that whether it's a basis or need, not. So I will firstly tell you the first method which is quite lengthy. After that we will discuss about the second method. So in order to show the basis we have to uh, sh show these two points are there. How you can check whether it's LI? We can simply take the elements are here. Then our target is to check whether the elements are zero or not. If these are zero then we call as the LI. If at least one of them is non-zero, then it is a LD. So we can equate the coefficients. Now, uh, how you can solve them? You can simply add them. If you add them, it's a twice of this is here. Now you can see whenever alpha 1 plus alpha 2 0, from here it is alpha 3 is 0. From second, you can get as the alpha 2 0. And similarly, from here is. So once you will solve that, you will get this as 0. It means it's L line. How you can prove this value? So I can take any elements from here. So say V is any element in the R cube. So what are the elements of the R cube is A, B, C. Such that it can be written in the form of the S. So I can return as A, B, C as the scalar multiple of the first element, scalar and so on. Our target is to find the value of the alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 in terms of the A, B, C. If you are able to find the value of the alpha i's in, in terms of the ABC, then this property hold, otherwise not. So you can equate the coefficients. Now how you can solve them? If you add them, what will happen? This is nothing but twice of alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3. Now if you substitute this value as a, a, you can find the value of the alpha 3 from here. If you substitute this value, you can find the value of the alpha 2 from here and solve it. Now since you are able to find the value of the alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, it means uh, it's a span. These two properties are satisfied, so it means this is a basis. But once you will look about this, this is the first method, how you can find the basis are there, which is quite lengthy, because you can see you have to satisfy these two conditions, which takes a lot of the calculations are there. So in order to make the calculation easier, we can relax the second condition, provided this property is satisfied. What is the DIM is called as the dimension of the vector. What is the dimension of the vector is if you have if, if you have the basis S like of this example. Now you have proved that it's a basis. So how many elements are there? So there are my three elements. So I can call this as dimension of S is my three. So the number of the elements in the basis is called as the dimension of the problem. If you get infinite number of the elements are there, so it called as the infinite dimension. For example, you can see how many vectors are there. So this is the first polynomial, this is the second polynomial. So there are the two polynomials are there, so it called as the two dimension. This is the first dimension, this is the second dimension, so we call as the, this is called as the sec, uh, two dimensions are there. I denoted P as a polynomial of degree less than equal to n, that is called here. What is that? This is V2. V2 is nothing but like say R2. 
v3 is nothing but my r cube that is a two dimensional problem this is a three dimensional and this is called as the n dimension remember always that the basis of the polynomials are 1 x x square and x raised to power n how many elements are there n plus 1 and this is nothing but my identity elements of the n cross n always remember whenever there is a polynomial of degree p of n then the dimension is my n plus 1 this is a rule for you you can tips for you you can see whether it's a dimension or not you have to check firstly whether what is the dimension of the s if it is greater than of the v then it is not a basis why because we already discussed that s is not a line so once of the property is not satisfied it means this is not here for example if i consider this is my one vector and here and my vector space is say r cube so what is the dimension of this is my 3 what is the dimension of this is my 4 so since 4 is greater than of 3 it means this is not a basis there is no need to check on the other hand whenever dimensions are same then there is no need to check the second property there is no need to check this second property provided you have to simply prove that s is ally then it's a basis on the other hand if you find that dimension of the s is less than of the dimension of the v then you need to prove these two properties are there s is ally and s span of the s is my v as we discuss in the first method like of here so you can see what is the dimension of the s is my 3 what is the dimension of the p now is both are same so once it's a same now it is a basis or not we simply check whether s is ally or not so we can start from here our target is again to check whether the alpha i's are zero or not we can equate the coefficient of the x square we can equate the coefficient of the x or the constant So since alpha one is zero, so if you substitute here, you will get minus alpha two plus two alpha three is zero. So if I call as this is one, this is two. So if you add them, one plus two, you will get alpha three is my zero. So once alpha three is my zero, you can substitute in one. From one, alpha two is also zero. Alpha one zero, alpha two zero, alpha three zero. It means this is a ally. So there is no need to solve this. Uh, S is is equal to v. Now we can apply this rule for finding this one. So S firstly you have to write the elements as a v, like of here. So if it is this my here, this are my. Now you can see there is no condition imposed on that. What is my step one is you have to write the matrix A whose rows are the row elements. You have to write in the row echelon form. You have to watch the previous lecture with the shortcut tricks so that you can complete the uh, re uh, reduce in the simple form. so we can firstly write the matrix a as elements are my row okay. now my target is to becomes the row reduce it means i want this all elements as a 0 0 and 0 how you make them you can simply use this elementary row operations now you can use the shortcut tricks where i can tell you the this a box element find the determinant of this like say 3 minus 4 divided by box element that's a minus 1 this is 4 you can see this is a 4 minus 6 and so on now next target is my you have to make this as my zero you can use these two operation now this the row reduce how many row actually how many row reduce non zero rows are there there are the two non zero elements so these are my basis and the dimension is my two this is the required dimension and the basis look at the another one are there you have to find the basis and the dimension for the w1 this is for my w1 this is for my w2 Firstly, we can write the matrix for the W1. Your target is to make them as a zero. This is also as a zero. You can write the row reduce. Next target is to make them as a zero. You can take as R3 plus R2. Now this is the actual form. How many non-zero rows are there? There are the two. So the dimension is two, and the rows are one, two, two, and here. Same for the W2. We can write the matrix for the W2. We can make them as this as a zero. and this as a zero by using these operations next target is to make them this value as a zero you can write here so you can uh, simply remember that you can use the shortcut tricks uh, you can use the shortcut tricks where you can find this expression simplified how many non zero rows are there there are the two non zero rows so dimension is 2 the elements are here look at there this is the polynomial now you have to find the basis and now what is that what is the maximum degree of these fi's so the maximum degree is my x cube so it means what are the basis of the x cube you know that it's a degree of basis are my x cube x and so on 
so or you can write also like this way one x x square and x that's depending on you so if you write like this way then the corresponding coefficients of the x cubes are my what is that Co coefficients of the x cube is my one coefficient of the x square is my minus two and so on if you write the uh, basis at like this then you have to write the f1 f2 accordingly now these are my four vectors now you have to write this as ele row elements of this rest of the task are similar your target is to make these elements as my zero of this next of the target is to make them as a zero here how many number of the non zero rows are my two so these are my basis are here. so remember i have used these elements so since in the given question they are given about the polynomial so i can write the polynomial corresponding to this as x cube minus 2x square 4x plus 1 corresponding to this is 0x cube x square and here these are my basis and the dimension is my 2 look at the another one is there where it is a system of the equations are there so you can write the coefficients of here what is my x x is my x y z s and t the rest of the thing is similar you have to make them this value as a 0 you can write here now this is here you can make them this value as a 0 so if you want to make the calculation much easier you can take up one as also 0 that is you can convert them like of the row reduce echelon form so that's depending upon you whether you want to make this value as a 0 or not if you don't want to make then you can delete this value otherwise here. now number of non zero rows are here you can write the system this this is x this is a y this is z this is s and t now you can see i can find the value of the z from here in terms of the s and t i can find the value of the x plus y in terms of the s and t like here so i can substitute this value of the x and z here how many non zero vectors are there there are the three vectors y s and t so what are the coefficient of the y are there minus of 2 in this second one is 1 there is 0 there is 0 this is 0 plus i can write similarly for the s what are the coefficient of the s are there this is a 5 here is a 0 minus of 2 this is 1 and 0 now these three are my basis dimension is my 3 look at the last example are there now this is related to the matrix so what is the basis of the matrix so if if you write as a 2 cross 2 what are the identity matrix are there these are my standard one are so can you write any of the elements a b c d in terms of here you can write that so it means i can write firstly as here so this value as say matrix a i can write this value a in terms of the a b c d the first value a second value b that is the, this value that is a minus 5 minus 4 minus plus of 2 for here similarly for this for this and for here so now once you are writing now these are the vectors now you can write this column back rest of the tasks are similar you have to convert them into the natural form there are the two non-zero rows are there you can write this as of here since given are in terms of the matrix so i can write this in terms of the matrix in a similar form this is the a this is the b this is the c this is the d similarly for the next one six three and three are my basis and the dimension are my two so this is the way you can solve this basis and the dimension in very simple Math. Now you can find some other videos related to the vector space and the mathematics 2 playlist channel name Dr. Harish here where you can find the shortcut tricks of here. This is the lecture where you can find the shortcut tricks for finding the row reduced echelon form. Uh, all you can find this playlist uh, on the channel name Dr. Harish Till then best of luck students. Happy learning.